To get started, can you identify which two of these fractions are equivalent? If you're not sure, click down here to review when fractions are equal. Right, two-thirds and ten-fifteenths are equivalent fractions. You can check this by cross-multiplying, and you can also see this by multiplying two-thirds and five-fifths, which is equal to one, to get ten-fifteenths. There's one more way to see that these two fractions are equal using what's called cancellation. First, we can rewrite ten-fifteenths as two times five in the numerator and three times five in the denominator. Again, this is the same thing as two-thirds times five-fifths, because when you multiply fractions, you multiply their numerators and their denominators. And five-fifths equals one, so multiplying by five-fifths won't change the value of this expression, and we can ignore this term. So notice that we could have gotten rid of both of these fives over here without changing the value of this fraction. In general, whenever a fraction's numerator and denominator have any common factors, like the five in this case, the factors cancel out. You can cross them out or erase them completely without changing the value of the fraction. Also, canceling out all these common factors is often called simplifying a fraction. So next, try simplifying this fraction, 48 sixtieths. Cancel out as many common factors as you can, and then enter your numerator up here and your denominator down here, or click here if you get stuck. Nicely done. 48 equals 12 times 4, while 60 equals 12 times 5. The 12's cancel, leaving you with 4 fifths. So 48 sixtieths equals 4 fifths. Next, Try simplifying two more fractions, 20 90ths and 24 64ths. Remember to cancel out as many common factors as you can. Excellent! So 20 equals 2 times 10, while 90 equals 9 times 10. The 10's cancel, so 20 90ths equals 2 ninths. Over here, 24 equals 3 times 8, while 64 equals 8 times 8. We can cancel this 8 in the numerator with one of the 8's in the denominator, so 24 64ths equals 3 eighths. And you can always check this with a calculator, making sure that 24 divided by 64 equals 3 divided by 8. Next, try simplifying this expression. This may look intimidating at first, but don't worry. You might not have to evaluate 372 minus 145 since it's a factor in both the numerator and the denominator. Right, there's no need to evaluate 372 minus 145. It's a common factor in the numerator and denominator, so it cancels out. This fraction is equal to 3 fourths. Try another example. 7 times 5 times 5, over seven times five times eight. Here, there's more than one factor you can cancel out. Nicely done. First, you can cancel out the sevens in the numerator and the denominator. Then, you can cancel out one of the fives up here with the five down here. And that leaves you with five eighths, the simplified fraction. Now let's switch things up a little. Say your friend is doing some cancellation. Here are four fractions, and over here your friend cancels the nines, over here it's the fours, over here it's the threes, and in this fraction it's the sixes. Not all of these are correct cancellations. Some of these actually change the value of the fraction. So why don't you go ahead and identify for your friend which of these are correct examples of canceling out. Precisely. Over here, the nines are a common factor, and over here, the sixes are a common factor. But these cancellations are actually wrong. Over here, you're adding four, not multiplying by four, and you can check that with a calculator. Two-fifths is not the same as this expression, which turns out to be six-ninths, or two-thirds. And over here, three is a factor in the numerator, but not in the denominator, so you can't cancel out in this expression either. Now one last thing. Suppose you have a fraction that looks like this. Seven over seven times two. It would be nice to cancel out the sevens, 
but it looks like we don't have a numerator anymore. We're left with nothing over 2. Well, that's not right. 7 is really the same thing as 7 times 1. And now, if we cancel out the common factors, we're left with 1 half. So whenever you cancel out a numerator or a denominator to the point where it's all crossed out, that means you're really left with a 1. So try a final example. How can you simplify 4 over 4 times 8 minus 5? Again, enter a single whole number as your numerator and another whole number as your denominator. Let's add some fractions. Suppose you have 3 eighths and you want to add another 2 eighths. What's the sum? Let's see that visually. Here's a dot and let's label 3 eighths and then let's label another 2 eighths. So all together, what fraction do we have? Right, in total we have 5 eighths here. So 3 eighths plus 2 eighths equals 5 eighths. You might have noticed these two fractions have the same denominator and that's the same denominator as the sum over here. And the numerator of the sum turns out to be the sum of the numerators of the two fractions you're adding together. Try using this trick to evaluate a few more sums. What's 4 sevenths plus 1 seventh and 3 ninths plus 4 ninths? Right. This sum is 5 sevenths and this sum is 7 ninths. So whenever you have fractions with matching denominators, you can add them together by keeping the denominator and adding their numerators. Great. But what happens if you're adding fractions that have different denominators, like 5 twelfths plus 1 third? What do you do? Well, the trick is to find equivalent fractions that do have matching denominators. Let's take 1 third and let's rewrite it as a fraction with a 12 in the denominator. What's the numerator for this equivalent fraction? Nicely done. You can multiply the numerator and denominator by 4, showing that 1 third is the same thing as 4 twelfths. So that means that 5 twelfths plus 1 third equals 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. So what's 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths? Exactly. Now that these two fractions have the same denominator, you can keep that in the sum and then add the two numerators to get 9 twelfths. Let's make sure that's right. Here's a dot. Let's divide it into 12 equal pieces and shade in 5 of them. So here's 5 twelfths. We can also divide the dot into 3 equal pieces and shade in 1 of them. So this region here is 1 third. Adding them together gives us a total of 9 twelfths, which is the right answer. And if we erase a few of these dividing lines, we can see that this simplifies to 3 fourths. And so 5 twelfths plus 1 third equals 3 fourths. Whenever you're adding fractions with different denominators, you should rewrite them so they have the same denominator and then add them together. Try another example. What's 2 fifths plus 1 seventh? If you get stuck, click over here and we'll figure this out together. Excellent work. So 2 fifths plus 1 seventh equals 19 30 fifths. Again, you had to rewrite the fractions so they had the same denominator, which was 35 in this case. Try another example. What's 3 fourths plus 1 sixth? Enter the numerator and denominator of your answer over here and make sure to simplify your answer, canceling out any common factors. Nicely done. So 3 fourths plus 1 sixth equals 11 twelfths. Next, let's look at subtracting fractions. For example, what's 5 sevenths minus 1 seventh? Well, here's a dot divided into 7 equal pieces. Let's shade in 5 of them, giving us 5 sevenths. And then we're subtracting or removing 1 seventh. What fraction does that leave us with? Right, this equals 4 sevenths. Just like addition, when you're subtracting fractions with the same denominator, that's the denominator in your answer. And you can subtract the numerators. 5 minus 1 equals 4. 
Next, try two more examples. Five halves minus one-fourth and two-thirds minus one-sixth. For these, you'll want to rewrite some of the fractions so they have the same denominator. Nicely done. Five halves minus one-fourth equals nine-fourths, and two-thirds minus one-sixth equals three-sixths, which you can simplify to one-half. Next, try evaluating this expression, one-third minus four-sevenths, and if you get stuck, just click over here. Excellent! One-third minus four-sevenths equals negative five-twenty-firsts. And it makes sense that this answer is negative because you're taking a smaller number, one-third, and subtracting a bigger number, four-sevenths. That will always give you a negative answer. Okay, try this one out. What's two-thirds plus four? So now we're adding a fraction and a whole number. Remember, whenever you see a whole number, you can think of it as that number divided by one. So try rewriting these fractions so they have the same denominator and then find the sum. Precisely, you can rewrite four over one as twelve over three. So two-thirds plus twelve-thirds equals fourteen-thirds. And that's our answer. Two-thirds plus four equals fourteen-thirds. Try one last question. What's five minus three-fourths? Here we'll explore how to divide fractions. But first, you'll need to know how to multiply fractions. For example, what's three-fifths times three-fourths? Exactly! You can multiply the numerators and denominators to get an answer of nine-twentieths. Next, let's take a closer look at three-fifths. Which of these green regions here represents three-fifths? Right, this green region is three-fifths of the circle. Now suppose you were to take this green region and divide it into three equal parts. What fraction of the circle would you have? In other words, what's three-fifths divided by three? Excellent! So now you've already solved a division problem with fractions. This green region is three-fifths, and dividing it into three equal parts would leave you with this purple slice over here, which is one-fifth of the circle. So three-fifths divided by three equals one-fifth. Now what happens if you divide one fraction by another fraction? For example, what's three-fifths divided by two-sevenths? Well, first, let's rewrite the division like this. And you can think of this as another fraction, with a fraction in the numerator and in the denominator. But this is still three-fifths divided by two-sevenths. Now this is equal to three-fifths divided by two-sevenths times one, because multiplying by one does not change the value of an expression. And here's another way to write one. Seven halves divided by itself, because any number divided by itself gives you one. Why did we choose seven halves over here? You'll see in just a minute. So let's replace the one over here with this equivalent fraction. So now we're multiplying two fractions here. And to multiply fractions, we can multiply their numerators and their denominators. Let's start with the denominators. So what's the product of two-sevenths and seven-halves? Well, the two over here cancels out with this two, and this seven down here cancels out with the seven up here. So again, what's the product of these two fractions? And click here if you'd like to review canceling out factors in fractions. Right. Everything cancels out, so two-sevenths times seven-halves is one. Next, let's take a look at those numerators. What's the product of three-fifths and seven-halves? Excellent! Three-fifths times seven-halves is twenty-one-tenths. Now notice that our final answer is twenty-one-tenths divided by one. Dividing a number by one doesn't change the number, so this is twenty-one-tenths. And so because all these twos and sevenths cancel down here, three-fifths divided by two-sevenths equals three-fifths times seven-halves. Let's take a closer look at what's going on. Dividing by two over seven 
turns out to be the same as multiplying by 7 over 2. And notice that 7 over 2 is what you get when you flip the numbers in this fraction, making 2 the denominator and 7 the numerator. In general, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And reciprocal is a fancy word for the fraction flipped over. So dividing by 2 sevenths is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 2 sevenths, which is 7 halves. Try another example. What's 5 eighths divided by 2 thirds? If you get stuck, click over here. Nicely done. So 5 eighths divided by 2 thirds is the same as 5 eighths times 3 halves, which is 15 sixteenths. Try a few more examples. What's 2 ninths divided by 1 third and 1 seventh divided by 4 thirds? Right, 2 ninths divided by 1 third is 6 ninths, and you can simplify this fraction if you want, writing it as 2 thirds. And 1 seventh divided by 4 thirds is 3 twenty-eighths. Now let's say you're dividing a fraction by a whole number, like 3 fourths divided by 5. Well, you can still use this rule about reciprocals if you remember that 5 is the same thing as 5 divided by 1. So to divide these fractions, you can flip 5 over 1, making it 1 over 5, and then multiply. 3 fourths times 1 fifth is 3 twentieths, so that's the answer. 3 fourths divided by 5 equals 3 twentieths. Try a few more examples with fractions and whole numbers. What's 4 divided by 1 third and 5 ninths divided by 5? Great, so 4 divided by 1 third is 12 divided by 1, or 12. And 5 ninths divided by 5 equals 1 ninth. So now let's see some real world examples of dividing fractions. Suppose you have 7 eighths of a delicious chocolate cake, and you want to divide what's left of this cake evenly among three people. So what fraction of the total cake does each person get? Excellent work. So what we're really asking here is what you get when you divide 7 eighths by 3, and you found this was 7 twenty-fourths. Let's make sure that's right. So here's the fraction 7 eighths, and here's how we would divide 7 eighths into 3 equal parts. So this purple region here represents 1 third of the green region. But this question was asking what fraction of the total cake this purple region represents. So if we draw a few more equal slices and count them carefully, then sure enough, you can see that this purple region here contains 7 of the 24 total slices. So this answer is absolutely correct. Okay, one more real world example. Say you're building a fence that's 10 feet long, and you're building that fence by putting together a lot of posts, or pickets. If each of these posts is 2 sevenths of a foot, how many posts do you need in total to make this fence? In other words, if you divide up 10 feet into segments that are each 2 sevenths of a foot, how many segments do you have? Precisely, so what you're really doing here is dividing 10 by 2 sevenths. This equals 70 halves, and 70 divided by 2 is 35. So you'll need 35 posts. And you can always double check that by taking 2 sevenths, the length of a single post, and multiplying it by the total number of posts, which should give you the total length of the fence. And sure enough, this product is 10. So 35 was definitely the right answer. So remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal.